Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Greg Sullivan. He's the CEO of The Bullet ID Corporation. Greg, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, James. So, Greg, The Bullet ID Corporation is a private company that's development stage. Um, you've got uh, a financing underway, and this financing is to achieve what exactly in terms of the Bullet ID business model? Right, yeah. We, we currently have a private place that we're doing. Uh, we're looking to complete production. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two components to it. There's a hardware component and a software. We're at the point in development now where we have to bring the two together to work in unison. Uh, so the proceeds, some of it will go towards uh, completing that technology, which is a relatively short time frame, and then really to market the technology uh, itself to, mm -hmm. the, to the world. And what exactly is the technology? So basically what it does, it uses uh, barcoding to serialize ammunition, and that allows manufacturers to monitor the production, use, transfer, and destruction of ammunition, and also governments. So or actually any agency that has an inventory of ammunition, you can from end to end track it. The really big advantage is for governments in real time, they could see where all their issuance of ammunition is at, at any point in time. So it's really kind of a groundbreaking uh, thing for the governments to have that, to know where all the resources are uh, in real time. Mm -hmm. So each round has a unique identifier on Correct. it. Correct. And that round is tracked in an inventory control system on a computer, in the cloud. Yes, it's done. We're using blockchain technology. Uh, mm -hmm. As we see, more governments are getting comfortable with blockchain. They're migrating to it. So we want to kind of be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a security aspect that goes with it that kind of instills confidence with the end users. So we're using blockchain as our uh, in our software. But yes, it really is. It's creating a database for that uh, customer to be able to control from, from start to finish where their ammunition is. Uh, for manufacturers, from the point of inception of the round right through to the end user, they can track it. If there's a recall issue or a safety issue, uh, you know, it gives them a better idea of where the ammunition is. And then for governments to know uh, as an issue to their, their soldiers or, or um, you know, enforcement officers in the field, at any one point they'll know where it is and then at what point they have to, it, if it expires, they have to bring it back for uh, re reissuance or destruction. Mm -hmm. And so why are government agencies so interested in an inventory control system where the old one has done what it's done for the last 50, 100 years. Right, I mean, especially the world's changing, especially when it comes to accountability. We're seeing a lot of these countries, especially ones that are funded by, you know, some of the, the G8 countries for their, for their military hardware, uh, they want accountability. So did, when they issue ammunition to their, to their soldiers or to their officers, they want to know that's staying within, you know, the government use. If all of a sudden some, some uh, cartridges are found at a human rights violation and they can track it back to a government issuance, mm -hmm. then they'll know who to hold accountable. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that you know, uh, comes in because they get funded by some of the G8 countries. Uh, you know, they want to have that accountability to, to ensure that do it, they're doing everything they can to keep that within the government domain. Hmm. Interesting. So is the model then to etch bullets with these unique identifiers and then to charge a price per bullet for the extra technology that's added? Or are you going to sell the machines? How does it work? Yeah, there'll be a couple streams of revenue. I mean, obviously one for the manufacturers. You know, there, there's many manufacturers that are small to medium, but you know, they, they do millions of rounds, like tens of millions of rounds a year. So in a soft market, I mean, it's very cyclical, the ammunition market. Uh, it goes from being very robust the declining and going back to being robust and generally is driven by American politics. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to put a big capex on a small manufacturer. So we looked at creating technology that was inexpensive enough that we could upfront the cost, put it in and take a royalty from every round that's made. It might be a fraction of a cent up to you know, pennies or you know, five, ten cents depending on the size and, and cost of the round. So we saw that as the best model to get to, to penetrate the market. And then on the software side for governments, yeah, that they will be purchasing, you know, that. That'll be a standalone system mm. uh, for the manufacturers. Will work in unison, and the financial model will be such that it will cover both hardware and software. But yeah, there, there's kind of two streams of revenue for the hardware and software, and then for software alone. Okay. So what is the size of your market globally, assuming you were to able to saturate it at a reasonable rate? Right. You know, the, the market's huge. It's hard to really gauge. Uh, the markets. I always, I always tell people, you know, can people saying Canada there's not many guns and all that. You know, right now we have almost two and a half million people with uh, possession acquisition licenses. 
Uh, Canadians buy between 700,000 to 1 billion rounds a year. Um, you know, there's 12 to 16 million guns in this country. 5,000 retailers are involved in selling, uh, uh, you know, guns and ammunition. So even in Canada, it's a good-sized market. Take that globally, it, it's massive. Um, it's really hard to gauge because some countries don't track uh, sale of guns and ammunition. Mm -hmm. But you look at the United States, which consumers buy about, or, you know, they sell about 12 billion rounds a year between government and the uh, consumers. So the market just in North America is very, very, very robust. Mm -hmm. um, now the, the governments, we're seeing a lot of foreign governments that have come to the table with interest to have that accountability and tracking of, of the, uh, the issuance of ammunition. So that alone, as a, even as a standalone, is going to be a, a big source of our revenue. Mm -hmm. So is there an application for this technology in the retail side? There could be down the road with you know, adaptation by the, uh, by the manufacturer. I mean, it could come down to a micro level where on your smartphone you have the app and you can look at your bullet and, and see what the data manufacturer. Because there is an expiry date, gunpowder, you know, generally say about 10 years depending on how it's stored. Uh, but, you know, some shooters, you know, down the road, if they, they're buying serialized ammunition for a long time, they'll know exactly, uh, you know, when that, the data manufacturer is on that. So there could definitely be a, uh, um, you know, in the future, uh, uh, you know, a consumer, a consumer model. Sure. Um, what's your background? How do you come to be at the head of this organization? Uh, I was in, uh, uh, I have some military and law enforcement background, uh, senior levels of, uh, you know, um, management law enforcement. I developed some, um, involved in developing some, uh, some ammunition uh, systems back uh, in the early 2000s, brought it to market. Uh, then I was involved in running an ammunition company. So I got to see, um, you know, uh, what it takes and really how, um, how delicate the market is, mm -hmm. but again, you know, really how big the market is globally. Sure. So, and so, what's the timeline on this? So, um, you know, you're at, you're at the point where you're just deploying this now. How soon until revenue starts to happen significantly, and what's the window look like to profitability for the company? Yeah, I mean, we've actually sold our first system uh, already to a, to a manufacturer uh, in the United States. We hope to have that uh, implemented into their existing manufacturing line about November, mm -hmm. uh, and then following that, we have actually a, a very, um, uh, you know, a large pipeline already, 20, 25 foreign governments that we're talking to that are interested in this technology. So we really see Q1, Q2 of 2019 as our breakout. But um, hmm. it really, we're not, you know, it's not like a pharmaceutical play where we're talking 10 years from now. Right. The customers are there and waiting. The, the, the demand is there, it's been there for a while. Uh, so we're the first company that can really meet the demand on a realistic basis. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming then there aren't other companies out there doing this? Not that we know of. I mean, they've really tried, the industry has tried several times to serialize bullets. They've always tried on the projectile or the bullet itself. Um, and again, you've got to be very careful with the ballistic flight. You've got to be careful, you know, it generally when a bullet hits down fragments, so, so you lose that. So it hasn't been successful. And a lot of it's been done for the, for the reason of gun control. This is an inventory management system. So we want the manufacturer to be able to know and the, the, the best course of action is putting it on the cartridge. And you know, with the system we have, we have a patent pending system to put it on, it'll really, uh, it'll be, I think, a market disruptor. Hmm. Fascinating, Greg. Okay, well, we'll follow with interest. Obviously, I'm an investor in the company by way of disclosure and so, Love to see what's going on and we'll keep coming back to you. Thanks for joining Great. me today. Thank you, James.